Good morning everyone and welcome to a really unique place here in southern Utah. I'm just outside of the town of Hanksville and the landscape here is just otherworldly. Really cool <laughs> gray, yellowish gray landscape. The bottom of the valley here is gray and then the cliffs have this yellowish tinge to them. And I've driven as far up this valley as you're officially allowed and supposed to go. There are signs here saying that the motorized route ends here, but uh, there are lots of tire tracks going past this point over here and over here, but we're gonna be doing things by the book here today. I'm parking here, and the plan is to walk about half a mile on foot to something over here that I wanna see. But uh, also, as long as we're here at the, we'll call it the trailhead, it's a cool little, little hole in the rocks over there, a little natural arch. Maybe we'll go explore that at the end. But uh, first of all, let me get the gear ready. And when I say that, I say that a lot in my videos, get the gear ready. When I say that, I mean get the backpack, make sure there's water in it, make sure there are spare batteries for the cameras, make sure the various cameras are in there. So uh, obviously I'm using this camera, but the drone, the 360 camera, uh, and the batteries for all of those, and some food and, and everything like that. So let's get the gear ready, then we'll hit the trail or hit the hit the road really but we'll call it a trail hat and sunglasses are also important don't want to forget those even though it's kind of an overcast day today it's always nice to have a little bit of protection all right let's roll Welcome to a just fantastic rock formation with an even more fantastic name. This is called the Angel of Death. And it's obviously a, just a striking, beautiful, impressive rock formation in its own right. But if it had been called something like Bob Stump, you know, <laughs> you lose a little bit of something. Having it be called the Angel of Death is just a much more dramatic, much more intriguing name but I think it's appropriate. This gray rock that the, the pillar is made out of, if you can call it rock, it's called Mancos Shale, and it's just very crumbly, very loose. But uh, this has been climbed. You, could see, you can see from here, and you can see it in the drone footage too, although the, the lighting is bad right now. Up at the top there are some, uh, some slings or some, some webbing, some cord that, uh, that, anchors have, or that climbers have left as an anchor. And this rock, it isn't strong enough to hold bolts, which is what you would naturally put in rock like this, or, you know, solid rock that didn't have cracks in it. It's too soft for that, and so I understand that when climbers climb this formation, as well as the, uh, this other one, there's a neighboring rock formation across the valley over there that I've been to before called Long Dong Silver, which is just as impressive, if not more so, than this one. They use nails, and not pitons, but nails, like like eight inch nails, and they just hammer them directly into the rock. And basically you, you 
pull up on those to make upward progress. What a pile. What a <laughs> what garbage rock, but it's it's a beautiful formation. It's a striking formation. And here's a look at the cliffs behind the tower, those yellowish tinged cliffs. Again, just very very dramatic, very convoluted, very featured. Very textured. Very impressive. And there's a zoomed in shot of Long Dong Silver over there. Again, that one is more well known. It, it is a bit more dramatic, but I went there probably, I don't know, five years ago, pretty early on in the channel. And so I do have a video of going over there. I should revisit it sometime, but today is not that day. I will put a link in the video description if you want to get a closer look at that guy. Really fun, really neat thing to see here and a great views. Got some mountain views, some snow-covered mountain views off in the distance. And uh, I'm gonna head back to the trailhead. I want to go check out that little arch. Well, as I suspected, it's not a huge hole. It's probably three feet across at its very widest, maybe two feet high. Still cool though. You know, a lot of the time when we talk about changes in the landscape and geological processes, we, we talk about a scale of, of centuries or even millennia, or even like millions of years, you know? Uh, I think this one, we can we can shorten that time scale a little bit. I think that if you were to check back in, in 10 years or even five years, you might find this hole here a little bit bigger. And as long as we've taken the time to get up here and, and brave the super loose scramble up this stuff, let's enjoy the view a little bit. We can see the Angel of Death right in the center there. And then over here, that's where I parked. So that's where we're headed next. I'm gonna drive back out to the highway, which is over here, and check this out. This is another impressive rock formation, which we'll have to save for another day. You can go back out to the highway, which is over here, and go this way, and then hang a right onto one of the more famous, well, onto a road that'll lead us to one of the more famous natural landmarks in this part of Utah. This beauty behind me here is Factory Butte. And like I said, it is a landmark in this area. It's, it's an impressive mountain. It stands kind of all alone. There's really nothing else around it for miles. And uh, it's just a really beautiful area. Interesting gray badlands, similar to where we were earlier. At some point in the future, I'd like to get a closer look at the mountain, like climb up on the sides of the mountain. Uh, today isn't that day. We have other fun things planned. I've actually looked into climbing this and it can be climbed, but it's super, apparently, super difficult and pretty dangerous. I mean, you can see how, just how steep, if we zoom in a little bit, how steep sided that, that dirt is that's around, that's below that cliff band at the top. And I've read a few trip reports of people climbing it and they talk about how an ice axe is, a, is an essential piece of gear. Because that loose dirt is so steep, you need to have an ice axe or two or some ice tools, like things you would use to climb a frozen waterfall or to climb a, a steep snowy mountain. You need that to, to 
gain purchase on that stuff. So sounds pretty cool. I don't know if I'll make it to the top of the thing, uh, but I'd like to at the very least get, a, get up there, you know. Uh, but again, that'll be a future video for now. Let's continue on uh, past the mountain here, past Factory Butte. There are a lot of dirt roads in this area. There's good camping in this area. I'm gonna kind of go, go past Factory Butte and then hang a left and there's a valley uh, that I think I can see over in the distance here that I'm interested in exploring a little bit. Yeah, I think this red-sided valley that you can kind of see in the distance here, this is where we're headed next. That was a surprisingly, surprisingly beautiful little drive. So I left the, the main road that goes around Factory Butte. In fact, I can see Factory Butte dead ahead here. I'll show you the view here in a second. I left that loop road and took kind of a, a one-way side road off, off into the distance and uh, ended up here. And what a spectacular drive. That was really, really pretty, just really great colors, very interesting rock formations. You know, there were, Badlands formations and cliffs of various colors and and a couple of creek crossings. Just an awesome little drive. I'll put links or I'll put uh, in the in the description below. I'll put GPS coordinates of this spot where I am now and where I left the the main Factory Butte Road. In case you want to drive that little stretch, uh, didn't take long. Maybe 20 minutes, half an hour, but totally totally worth it. And uh, before we get started here, hiking through this really, again, dramatic terrain, I do have one slice of pizza left over from a couple days ago that I'm gonna, gonna finish off, and then we'll hit the trail. Actually, I don't think there is a trail. I think it's just kind of cross country. We'll hit the, hit the dirt. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> give me a second here, then we'll start exploring again. Okay, so here I am at the end of this kind of obscure little road, and we've got a pretty little canyon here that I'm gonna to need to cross to head in this direction. I think once I get over or get across the canyon, it'll be relatively easy going. Sorry about the wind. Easy going to these cliffs over here. I, I've seen a picture of these cliffs up close and they just looked really awesome. So I wanna go check those out. And then in the other direction, we have a great view of Factory Butte and you can see better here what I mean about it being, you know, kind of standing on its own without anything else close by. So it just makes it that much more dramatic. Anyway, let's cross this little canyon over here and head west. Check this out, I was just walking along and and noticed this. It looks like some sort of, I don't know, it looks like a, maybe an old volcanic vent, like an old steam vent, or maybe it's just a little dissolved limestone hole. I'm not sure, pretty cool though. There are actually several of these in the area. That one that I found at first was the, I think the largest, but got some little small ones here too. Huh. If you're a geologist, feel free to weigh in in the comments. What are these holes? Well, after hiking for a few miles, I've made it. And I wanted to get to this cluster of towers and I'll, you know, we'll explore them in a minute here. I'm going to fly the drone around. It's just a really twisted landscape with all the, the spires and towers and fins and everything. Really, really neat place. But out this way, about half a mile off, there's a big flat area. 
and I had read that there was a plane crash out there in 1943. I think it was an army airplane going from California to Colorado crashed over there and uh, apparently there are some pieces of wreckage to be found. More specifically there's a there's what's left of an old window. So shortly after the plane crashed uh, someone was hired locally to come through with a bulldozer to to bury the wreckage of the plane but uh, there is a, a guidebook author his name is Michael Kelsey he's written a series of guidebooks to southern Utah and I'll put a link to the one that I've used to plan this part of the trip down below uh, he found some pieces of that plane over there and he took a picture and it's included in his guidebook of like a one foot by two foot window like airplane window on the ground that's kind of shattered but it was pretty cool and I wanted to find it. He said it was 400 meters southeast of a little hill that's over there. I scoured that area. I, I wandered back and forth around that area. Couldn't find the window. And so that would have been cool to see, but uh, I'm glad I, I have this at least to focus on for now. So let's wander around a little bit and, and explore this kind of fantasy land of scary and whimsical rock formations. Well, yet another hidden gem of southern Utah. These towers are obviously reminiscent of the Fisher Towers near Moab, if you've been there, or of the Mystery Towers in that same general area. I'll put a video down below if you like this sort of thing, if you like these big skyscraper rocks, then I'll put a link to the Mystery Tower video that I did last year. This rock here is Entrada Sandstone, which is the same sandstone as the Fisher Towers. <laughs> There's a little tornado, like a little sand tornado, a dust devil right in front of me here that I just noticed. Right in front of Factory Butte here. That's something you don't see every day. It's just a hyper-localized dust storm. And it looks like it's coming toward me. I can hear it. I, I don't think you'll be able to hear it in the microphone, but I can hear the, the wind from that. Wow. Anyway, like I was saying, I'll, I'll keep an eye on that. I'll let you know if it changes or I'll show it to you again as I get closer to it. Really great under the radar area here. It takes a little bit of effort to get to, both in terms of driving and hiking, but totally worth it if, if you're into this sort of thing. And uh, let me see, what time is it? It's 2.43. I have probably an hour, hour and a half of hiking to do to get back to the car. And then I have several hours of driving to do to get to where I want to be tomorrow. I'm actually gonna go to a kind of a different region, a different part of Southern Utah, and uh, there's no direct route between here and there. So I have quite a bit of driving to do, and so I'll meet back up with you guys once I find the campsite tonight. The dust devil over here is, uh, is dissipating a little bit, it looks like. Yeah, it's just kind of a hazy, yellowish, reddish tan cloud now. Looks like most of the power has gone out of it. That was a really, really neat thing that we were able to see. That's one of the joys of exploring this area. You never quite know what you're gonna get. Anyway, gonna head back to the car, drive several hours. I'll, I'll pull over and find a campsite once it's starting to get dark. So hopefully I'll be able to show it to you guys. I'll meet back up with you then. 
It's now several hours later, about 20 minutes before sunset, and I found a little campsite. It's just tucked back in the trees here. There's not much room for anything other than a car, but that's fine by me. All I need is room for the car tonight. Sleeping in your car is so great. You just pull up into a campsite and you're done. I love it. You might have to rearrange a couple of things. Like I, the only thing I did was move my backpack from the back to the front seat and yeah, I'm ready to go for the night. I have a little view through the gap in the trees here at the mountain across the way, but uh, mostly the trees block any kind of view. And again, that's fine for the night. I'm about half a mile from the main highway that goes through the area, so I can hear a little bit of road noise, but it's not too bad. And once I'm in the car for the night, I won't be able to hear it at all. So again, not a problem, but uh, had a great time today. I hope you guys enjoyed the day's adventures. Also, Southern Utah never disappoints, and today was no exception. Let me know what you think. Let me know what your favorite part was. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll see you in the next one. Be sure to check out Adventure Know How, my new site, where you can gain access to a map of all of my free campsites, plus monthly bonus videos that you won't find anywhere else. Learn more at adventureknowhow.com. And for links to everything else SUV RVing related, visit suvrving.com. Links to these sites and more will be in the video description.